soon as we get out on the water, the first thing we'll look at will be uh, current direction. So uh, again, we always try to get on the, the upcurrent side of, of the reefs and certain reefs will produce when the current's going a certain direction and other reefs and other areas of reefs will be the opposite when the current's going a different direction. So um, pinpointing the direction of the current is very important. You can look at the, uh, the direction of phone lines um, running off, off headlands. You can look at the, the drift of your boat on your GPS, um, the direction of your, of your jig when it's being retrieved in the water. So all of these are clues that provide you with uh, some indication of which way the current's going. Probably one jig off the bottom. Got a lift and there, there he is, he's chased it up. It just shows you how close the fish are at the moment to the bottom. That was probably one metre jig off the, the sand and Kingfish knocked it up. It's probably, probably two more jigs up, so another two or three metres and, and he's taken the lure. Try and either pull them up slow or hold them there if they're a little one and hoping that um, the other person will hook up just off our fish, off the follows. A little bit of fish here, you might be able to see the, the reef dropping onto the sand and again as I turn around and go over it, that's the hard reef. This is all bait fish sitting on the edge of the reef. We're just marking up a few kingfish at the base of that school, just coming over it now. We like to fish off the starboard side of the boat. Basically the engine, sorry, the leg at full lock goes further to starboard so we can uh, get the boat pointing side onto the breeze. It's best for fishing, slows the drift down a bit, spaces the fishermen out the best. You don't want all your lines fishing in the same area. So we always turn, turn to port, get the, uh, the starboard side of the boat upwind and then turn the wheel back hard lock to starboard just to slow the drift down and try and keep the boat side on. What also changed things from this morning when we couldn't catch any fish, it's now the run out tide as well. So you get that doubling up effect on the current, it makes the current much stronger. This morning the current was still pretty strong but nothing was happening. We, we come out a few hours later after the change of the tide. It's now the run out, we have uh, sighted a mako shark feeding, we've got uh, a lot more kingfish here trying to bite. And, yeah, things look a lot better than this morning purely because the run out tide has um, added to the effect of the existing current. In five minute drift, we're probably going close to four or five hundred metres. So you quickly, you quickly get off the fish. So it's pretty important when there's nothing around just to scoop back up the current, get back to your, to your original mark and try and find the fish again. You see also the bit of breeze picking up. We've probably got uh, white caps starting to form. The boat's drifting quite quickly on, on top of the current as well. You can see the jigs are probably going out at close to a 45 degree angle. Um, really no need to worry about that. We tend to find we can fish better sometimes when, when the jigs are more of an angle at the reef as opposed to dropping straight up and down in still conditions. We prefer to use a Rovex 80 pound depth finder braid. Uh, we find the durability of the braid uh, very good. We also find the, the one metre depth marking and colour coding uh, of every 10 metres of the braid very helpful to, to target fish at certain uh, depths in the water column. So just working that bottom 10, 12 metres, keeping it nice and smooth. Doesn't have to be too fast. Got a pretty nice fish on here. He's having a little bit of a run. It's a nice sort of five to six kilo fish. Very important that you go through the fish straight in the current, up past the current, try to put the jigs down in front of the fish because you might only have one go, it's like one, one jig cycle and you could be on the other side of them, the current's that strong. So looking at your plot is really important, it tells you which way you're drifting, what area of the reef you're covering and also the speed of your drift. So look at it now, we're about 1.5 knots so you can see we're drifting quite quickly, covering a lot of area. Um, the advantages of using a spin reel um, that we prefer are obviously greater spacing from the line to the handle. That allows for the, the rod to, be, when, when placed into a pivot point on the hip, it allows the, the left arm or, to be straightened. And you notice the straight shape through the wrist all the way to the shoulders, which allows better leverage and less fatigue through the arm. Fish on the cabo, I'd say it's going to test it out. That's giving me a good, good fight. Uh, we've been using the cabo reels for about the last two years now. The 60 up to the 100 size. Use them for jigging kingfish and also um, casting poppers and stick baits. Caught fish up to 15 kilos. 
I'd say this reel in particular has been on the boat for probably six to eight months and I'd say in that time it's probably caught around 100 fish and it's still as new condition really. It's starting to come up nicely now, good colour, probably a nice sort of six kilo specimen and he's not finished yet. Just work him towards the boat. I prefer to grab the jig if I can and that loads all the weight up through all the, all the terminal end. Takes it away from your knots and anything that might break. Much safer way of getting them on board. Quite like the K boats, very, very light, very robust construction, very solid reel, titanium baler arm, quite flexible and tough, can handle getting knocked around. Good quality drag. We caught some nice fish yesterday on it around the six to eight kilo mark and had no trouble handling the larger kingfish that we were catching. As with the Marquesas, it's it's quite easy with this setup to um, get that nice one metre jerk length, full cycle of the reel handle. It just all sort of matches up with a six foot rod. Find that if you increase your jerk length too far and go maybe a metre and a half, a big lift of the rod like that, you see they get slack line, you get a jerking, of the, jerking action of the lure, which we find doesn't work as well as a nice smooth action. When we switch over to live baiting from jigging, um, we don't feel there's a great need to change uh, the components. The, the Gary Howard Ocean Jeweler range of rods is more than capable. The, the Marquesa and Cabo and also the, um, the Finnor offshore reels are all more than capable of, of uh, adequately switching over to live baiting techniques. When live baiting we use uh, circle hooks, so um, it's uh, advantageous when using an overhead to, to fish with a very low drag. This allows the, the fish to take the, the, the hook and the bait and for the hook to, um, to, to properly rotate around the fish's jaw, which is, is what it's designed to do. So uh, fish with a very low drag and then just very gently increase the drag as, as the hook rotates through the fish's mouth. So uh, an overhead's very handy for that. Uh, with a spin reel, we'll uh, basically try to keep the, the rod very still and then just slowly load the rod up um, as, the, as the fish takes the bait and that hook, that circle hook does its job rotating around the fish's jaw. When live baiting we use uh, 80 pound Rovex braid, uh, pretty much the same rig as we'll use for, for jigging. We'll use uh, 80 pound fluorocarbon, uh, that'll be used for uh, the leader. Okay, this is a basic live bait setup. We try to keep it pretty simple. Basically have a quick release clip onto a swivel. And that's just crimped to a lead. Again, another solid ring that attaches to a fluoro. And that's about a metre long to a circle hook. Basically we work on putting, putting the, the, the weight at the depth that the fish are or that we locate on the sounder. And we use that by using the, the depth marked Rovex braid. And uh, basically we'll keep that really still until we feel the, the fish is hooked up properly. We'll just use uni knots in these at both ends. We try to always use fluorocarbon leader. Just keeps it nice and straight. There's a, a lack of tangling and very little memory if, uh, if there's any tangling in the, in the leader. Hook selection when live baiting depends on the size of the live baits and also the size of the fish. So we'll have a range of different hooks. These could range from 6 O's to 9 O's. We prefer to use the Finnor Marquesa for, for live baiting. Uh, we find it allows the fish at a very low drag and uh, just allows a smooth application of drag as the fish takes the bait and a circle hook is allowed to, to rotate around the fish's jaw and do its job properly. And really, you know, if we look at all the different methods of catching kingfish, obviously live baiting when the fish are on the, on the bottom near the reef. Live baiting is a good technique and people ask us why we prefer jigging but one of the things we don't have to worry about is catching live bait, um, looking after live bait through the day. It's quite hard to actually get a bait on the hook quickly when you need it and drop it down in the exact right spot whereas it's a lot easier if you're, if you're jigging with knife jigs. There are times that bigger fish or the fish are quite doggy and you'll need to, need to use live baits, but we, we just concentrate on jigging and um, it tends to get us by.